Well, a U.S. federal judge has ruled that the U.S. government cannot indefinitely hold citizens without charges, despite the bill that was signed into law earlier this year. So why did the judge strike down that part of the National Defense Authorization Act? Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. We have closely followed the NDAA here on Reality Check. As a reminder, the National Defense Authorization Act isn't all bad. It allows for funding for the military, military construction, and for defense activities of the Department of Energy. The part of the bill, though, that poses enormous constitutional problems is one provision which states that the president is afforded the absolute power to arrest and detain citizens of the United States without their being informed of any criminal charges without a trial on the merits of those charges, and without any due process safeguards protected by the Constitution of the United States. A group of writers and activists sued over this provision. They sued President Barack Obama, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, and the Defense Department. They claimed that that provision could allow them to be arrested and held indefinitely in military detention. Well, yesterday, a New York U.S. District Judge, Catherine Forrest, ruled in their favor and struck down the indefinite detention clause. Again, to remind you of what that clause stated, the president would have the power to order the indefinite detention of any associated forces that are engaged in hostilities against the United States or its coalition partners, against any person who has committed a belligerent act, or any person who has directly supported such hostilities in aid of enemy forces. And it also states that the president has the power to place these individuals into detention under the law of war without trial until the end of the hostilities. It was last October when we explained why this violates the U.S. Constitution. Yesterday's ruling by Judge Forrest states that as well. The statute at issue places the public at undue risk of having their speech chilled for the purported protection from Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and associated forces, i.e. foreign terrorist organizations. The vagueness of Section 1021 does not allow the average citizen or even the government itself to understand with the type of definiteness to which our citizens are entitled or what conduct comes within its scope. So here's what you need to know. That order prevents enforcement of the indefinite detention provision pending further orders from the court or an amendment to the statute by Congress. And speaking of Congress, today members of the House are debating the 2013 version of the NDAA. Some members of Congress want to include the indefinite detention clause once again. But there is a bipartisan group fighting it. Armed Services Committee Ranking Member Adam Smith, a Democrat, and Justin Amash, a Republican, they are pushing for an amendment that would ban those permanent detentions. We'll keep following it for you, and that is Reality Check. If you'd like to make your voice heard on the story, head over to Ben's Facebook page. You can find it by searching him, Ben Swan, WXIX. 